Hey skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. I'm Bob, how's it going? Bob and I are here today to talk about the brand new 2024 Line Chronic 94 and 101. Yep, I think you said it perfectly. What a time to be alive with these lovely new 101 twin tips. Oh, it's so fun. Kind of a remake of that 95 into this 94. Yep. Like, I think people are finally catching on to totally what we've been talking about for years. Yeah, so I know I've mentioned this in recent videos because we have actually done a lot of twin tip content in the yep. past like six months, and it, it's, it really feels like a theme. I think manufacturers are... are starting to pay more attention to this category, um, putting more technology, just more thought and effort into their twin tip production. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's just really exciting to see, you know, perhaps not surprising from a brand like Line, who is known for twin tips, that's pretty much all they do, with a, a few exceptions. But yeah, you know, like Alon Playmakers are yeah. a great example of just this kind of resurgence or this new excitement in the twin tip world. Even like we were just pointing at all the race skis from Vocal on the wall there, and we just talked. To, I just talked about all the twin tips, like the Revolt series. Yeah, they go. Now up. it's like eighty-six to one twenty-one. Yeah. Like it's a ton of skis in there. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, there's definitely a market for it, and I think that these manufacturers are doing a great job at totally putting their putting their top team on it. And yeah. Getting it done. Right. Instead of it just being like a an afterthought. Right. Like oh, we need twin tips. Yeah. Quick, go take that wood core from this ski and give it a turned up tail. Yeah. Good. Call done. it good. Yep. Let's put a fun graphic on yep. it and like sell it to kids. Right. Use some buzzwords. Right. So, no, I'm excited. Um, Bob alluded to it, but this is the 2023 Chronic right here. And basically, what Lion has done is they've taken a single ski and expanded it into a collection of two skis 94 that's next to Bob and then 101 over here. Um, and we don't often do or don't always do our reviews like this, but they ski so similarly mm -hmm. that I felt like we could talk about them together. Yep. You some, know, you know, same recipe. Yeah, same exact things going on here. Yeah, and like 94, 101, obviously there's a difference in width there, but it's not so huge. Um, and maybe towards the end of the video we can talk about who is going to be better choosing which ski. I don't think it's... I don't think it's as simple as just east-west. Right. Um, I think it's more personal application. Um, but yeah, exciting new construction, new shapes, um, and basically the same construction doesn't trickle down, but trickles up into the bacon as well. Yeah. So in theory, you could put that video, that ski in here too, but I feel like that ski deserves its own own attention. Yeah, and more time from us being on it too. I'd love to ski I'm that bacon more. On that. Yeah. Um, so. New Chronics, Bob, you got that 94 over there. Um, do you want to take us through what has changed for construction? Yeah, they are using now an aspen veneer wood core, so stringers of aspen glued together vertically. That's kind of the meat of the ski. There's not a whole lot else going on in terms of right. like core construction materials. Uh, but what they've done is they've kind of gone with this thick and thin type of uh, method of building the ski and how they're putting these different components in. Yeah. Uh, and really all of the elements uh, follow that same theory. So the thicker part uh, is in the sidewall. So when we're looking at this thing from the side, uh, the thickness of the core profile is pretty abundant underfoot. Uh, that does taper into the thin part. So sandwich underfoot, full sidewall, going into the cap. So cap wall construction. Uh, and that's kind of their thick to thin mentality. And then they also do it from the sides in. So they're using a thicker sidewall, uh, just going, extending into the core. Yeah. Um, kind of like how we talked about with Dina Star with their hybrid core, yeah. kind of just moving that material into the center of the ski. So that's another aspect of just thickness of the of the ski. And then they do the same thing with the base. So just bringing that base further into the into the meat of the ski gives it that just extra bit of stiffness and durability. Um, <clears throat> one of the innovative things that they've done this year, uh, sticking with the thin uh, aspect, is their thin tips and tails. So they've extended that core thin 
in, in the tips, uh, and then basically ended it, I would, what do you say, a centimeter yeah, below the end of the ski? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> where they've then just gone to a fiberglass to fiberglass yeah. like bonding. There's nothing in there. There's nothing in there. Which just, is, it's very interesting. Yeah. Um, but super thin on that tip, and then they've done the same thing in the tail as well. Again, just bonding that glass to glass. Uh, using our new favorite term, bioresin. Yeah. So a new resin, kind of we've seen it with K2 skis using this new material. Not surprising because those skis were developed in the same, same facility. Same factory, yeah. So, you know, not only is it a better bonding process, but they're claiming it's a 20% reduction in yep. carbon footprint for the resin materials. So uh, all things being equal, if we can have a more sustainable option, so much the better. Yep. So pretty interesting stuff that they're doing with the build of this ski, mostly just kind of playing on those thickness of materials and then thinning, and that creates and generates uh, the effect that we can talk about for performance. Yeah, it felt to me, um, <clears throat> Lion's got a really good, about four minute long video talking about the development and production of this ski. It's actually the Traveling Circus graphic version, which mm -hmm. is the same thing. And they they show some <clears throat> excuse me they show some footage from their factory, and it was fun for me or from the development center rather that was fun for me because I've been there yep. and I've seen all these machines like in action firsthand, uh, the tip slap thing right um, and again like I'll leave a link to this video so people can go and watch it the way like they just basically take the ski and put it in a vise and slap it against a like concrete table just over and over and over yeah. and over and over again, trying to recreate the delamination process that happens when you land backseat and yeah. your tip slap. So it was really cool to see. And then they also have this machine that like basically picks up a chunk of metal and drops it straight on the edge yeah. to mimic like rail edge impact. And it's, it's just awesome to see them really focusing on that stuff and, and truly trying to build a ski that will last. I really like the concept of the tip. Um, they didn't go as far as saying like, it's never gonna delam. Right. They basically said like, this is going to reduce delaminations to just chipping, which like, if you look at this ski, which was like an industry demo this year, so this thing's been skied yeah. hundreds of times Hammer. by just like <laughs> throttled yeah. by a bunch of like <laughs> industry people that don't care because right. it doesn't belong to them. Theirs. Like that's pretty impressive yep. that it just, you know, like I'm sure this thing's been, been put through it and we really just got a little bit of chipping up there. So it's pretty cool. I, I really like that. I like the edge story. Line uses a little bit thicker of an edge yep. than most companies. So just like really cool that they're so focused on durability Reminds me a lot of what Armada's doing with that kind of sidewall situation. Yep. You know, Alon's got a similar thing with how they're kind of beveling that top sheet. And it's just, I, I love that there's focus on durability. It also really feels like, like you were saying with the thick and thin, they're like controlling different portions of the ski. Yeah. So they've really like, compared to this ski, which to me had a, like a pretty homogenous, consistent, soft flex pattern. These skis and the one that you're holding too, now feel like they've got this like strong portion underfoot and leaves the tips and tails to just be like yeah. crazy soft. Like probably softer in the tips and tails than this crime. I would say so. Not like blend soft, but, but getting there. Really soft yeah. in the tips and, yeah, if, and maybe the tips and tails are just yeah. as soft as a blend and then you get this strong portion underfoot. So I think it's really cool. I think the development story is awesome. I think it's fair to say that it's not like there are a ton of additives in this ski, like right. carbon, carbon tubes, right. metal, basalt, rubber, Right. Whatever. No. But there's still like a lot of engineering that has gone into it. Yeah. And I, 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 I don't know. I think that's really cool and I really value that in its production. I think over the years we've found that like the process of milling a ski and shaping the core is, is as, as important, important. Yeah. if not more than right. additives and extra technology right. put in. Right. So, you know, keeping the price a little yep. lower by not just throwing a bunch of stuff in it, but still creating a really cool really like thoroughly designed and engineered right. ski. So I just thought that was really cool. 
And then from a shape perspective, obviously the first thing is that we've changed widths and now there's two of them. Right. So we've gone from 95 here to a 94 and a 101. I think beyond that, for me, the biggest difference is the rocker camber profile. So these new skis, if you want to show that one alongside, because it's very similar, it's basically the same exact rocker profile. There's a lot of tip and tail rocker in these skis, um, a little bit more in the tip than the tail, but being skis that are intended for some terrain park use, they're pretty darn balanced. Yeah, if you didn't know that you were looking at the tail, you would... Totally, yeah, that's that could be the tip. tip. Yep, and uh, Dimensions actually got a little bit more symmetrical as well. This ski is 130, 101, 124. Bob, your ski is 123, 94, 117, where I believe these are, yeah, 129, 95, 120. Yeah. So a little bit less difference between tip and tail widths. So a little bit more symmetrical here longer rocker and another thing that i'd want to point out is i've used this term before and sometimes it feels just like a kind of vague term but what a modern shape very spoony yep. kind of early tapered but straight tip and tail shape and just certainly reminds me of a lot of other skis that we've seen pop up onto the market recently no totally i mean that the way that that tail goes is pretty unique to like modern twin tip technology and design. Like yeah. that's like if it could say fun, <laughs> right? <laughs> like that's what it would be. I totally, it's a super playful tail shape. Yeah, uh, both from that twin twin tip and splay style, uh, right? You know, right to the rocker and yep. and that and that taper. Yeah. So, moving on to performance, um, can, again, we'll kind of just talk about both of them. Um, starting with groomers, they're a lot of fun. They're yeah. very easy to ski. Like I think the soft flex pattern in the tips and tails makes them extremely intuitive. Yeah. Because they don't, they never feel like they're fighting you. Like turn initiation is is very easy. And to me, as an all mountain ski, they were far more rewarding than the outgoing chronic. They make rounder, cleaner yep. turns, and yeah, just a lot more fun. When we got on them first at kind of the industry demos, uh, you know, it's fun talking to the other uh, representatives yep. from other companies, and they're like, "Hey, what'd you what'd you like? What'd you yep. what stood out to you?" And I was like, "This one." Yeah. You know, like I kept coming back to that through yeah. the season. Right away, Chronic One Hundred and One from an underfoot stability. You're like. I'm on the super playful fun ski, yeah. yet it is rock solid underfoot. Totally. Like they don't, there's not a lot of other skis out there like that. That yeah. are that playful in the, in the tips and tails and that rewarding to be up on edge in a, in a high edge angle carve. Turn. Yeah, yeah. Like, and like, again, yeah, if you like handed, handed somebody the ski and told them to flex the tip right. and then like ask them to like give their interpretation of what they think the ski will feel like. Yeah. There's no way they would say it, it's going to feel as strong as it does. No, but you know, at the same time, if you're looking for kind of that reactive energy out of those tips and tails, that's it, this is it, it, it's, it's not, not it. this. No, um, not at all. Yeah. So it's it's like definitely a stark contrast to like a Nordica Unleashed 98. Totally. Yeah. You're not getting that feedback, especially if you're putting the input in. Yeah. I mean, it's still easy to push right through it. Yeah. Um, you do have to ski it more centrally. Yeah, totally. Yeah, not if a, you're looking for that performance. Not a fore aft no. type of ski at all. Yeah. It's a lateral initiation. Love soft snow. Like I skied it on a bunch of really nice spring, like super yeah. soft, super warm days. And it it just it felt like it matched yeah. that snow condition really, really well. Totally. You know, like if I think if you were skiing it out on like bulletproof ice you might not feel the same like smooth yeah. feel. You'd see some movement in your tips and tails. Um, but no, it's, it's pretty cool how they've, they've made it highly playful, um, but also strong. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And I, that's the 185 over there, Yep. Um, which I skied and I skied the longer length in this ski as well. And 
I thought they were very manageable in longer lengths too. So if you're yeah. like kind of looking to boost stability, don't worry about it being like too much ski. Like there's so many things in a 185 that I'm like, oh my God, please get me off this. Where these, I was like, in, like I think I forgot. There's like a vid, there's a clip somewhere of you being like, those look long. And I'm like, <laughs> oh yeah, it's a 185. A <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, I didn't mean yeah. to take that one. Um, so I thought that was really cool. I think they've, you know, it's interesting because now it feels like a three ski collection, like I was saying with the bacon. Yep. The bacon has always been such a good soft snow ski. I never really thought of this as like a particularly great soft snow ski. Yeah. And these, with the change mostly to the tip shape, obviously having a wider ski at 101 here. But even this is, is, a, is a couple of Way orders of magnitude. Better than this better than in that soft kind of, snow, yep. 100%. So like trees, yep. low snow powder days, I'd say even moguls, that's not necessarily like specific to soft snow, but I think they're just way better than outgoing chronic for stuff like that. Yeah. And feels, to me, this ski feels very similar to Playmaker 101 when you ski it off piste. I yeah. think they have differences on piste. I think that Playmaker feels a little bit more precise and this feels a little looser. Like it's asking you to do a nose butter 360 because the tips are so soft, but off trail they have very, very similar characteristics and they're both awesome. I need a little more off trail. Sure. Um, for me personally. On that guy? You know, thinking about something like this as a mogul ski um, I feel for, like it'd be a little for, soft for you. For me, it's not enough. Yeah. I think that for people that are you that are lighter, that are kind of emerging and want to learn moguls, yeah. fantastic tool. Yeah, if, more, or if you ski them like me. Yeah. More I, slipping and smearing. But you, you might even find that this tail if is I just... If I got a little in the back. Yeah, it's just, it's getting out from under you. You know, it's kind of the opposite of what happens with too stiff of a ski. Right, um, where, where it's pushing you forward yeah, all the time. Yeah, this is just, it's going to almost feel snowblade-ish, sure. um, but if you're, you know, if you're kind of learning and yep. you want this ski for, um, for those purposes, I think that there's a lot of value there. Yeah. I don't think that's nearly as big of an issue in trees. Nope. I think that's a, a kind of a mogul specific thing. Yeah. Which for a lot of skiers isn't even a concern. Right. Like, <laughs> You know, we, we joke around about this every once in a while, but if you live out west, you don't even have moguls. Come on. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but it's different. Like, I yep. could, you know, I think like a tight, firm East Coast zipper line. Yeah, yep. I can see what you're saying where the tips and tails might not be supportive enough, but I don't think for too many people that would be a problem. No, that was just my, that's one of my takeaways on skis with very flexible tails. Yeah. yeah. Is that it's tough for me to manage. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. You're more of a fore aft mogul skier. Right. Like you expect a lot from the tips and tails of your ski. Yeah. Where when I'm in the moguls, like I don't even, <laughs> like I wish those things didn't exist. No, you're Give great. Give me a snowblade. No, you just got to, that left hand keeps getting pulled behind you. That's all you need. Just one fix. That's a, that's a me good. problem, not a ski problem. <laughs> um, park performance. You know, mm -hmm. we haven't talked about park performance yet, and they are chronics. The chronic yeah. has been a staple in the park community for a long, long, long time. I still think the focus of these skis most people who are going to be buying them are park skiers. And I think it, similarly to everything else that we've been saying about other applications, I suppose we can specify that ski. The 94. Yep. Yeah. I think every possible way to look at it, it's a better park ski than this. Interesting. Yeah. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I've said this before, I love a longer rocker shape like that, but the way that they've built more stability into the underfoot yep. portion means that it's, you're not giving up any playfulness for rails and stuff like that that you had on this ski, but you're gaining some bigger jump performance on that ski, yep. which I think is awesome. And there's a ton of line athletes that are already skiing both of these skis and like doing so many different things on them. Yeah. Like the line 
team is, is so cool because there's just a huge range of different skiers on that team. And it's really, really cool to see how a ski like this can work for just so many different types of skiers with different backgrounds and different styles and stuff like that. Totally. I, like, am disappointed that I didn't get to <laughs> ski them, like, without a demo binding on a pair that mm -hmm. didn't belong to a sales rep that I had to give back because I would have really liked to do some jumping on them, slide a bunch of rails, stuff like that. It's pretty darn easy for me to ski a ski and not do those things and know that I'm going to absolutely love doing those things on it, but still, yeah, still wish I had had that opportunity. No, and it seems to fit with that more modern style. I mean, you know, we brought up Revolt, but Revolt 90 of just kind of that stepping down of material and getting that lighter swing weight while yeah. keeping a solid ski underfoot. Yeah, and they're not light right. as a whole entity. Right. Like this ski in the 179 is like 2,000 grams, right. I think. Yeah, it's heavy. Right, right around it. So it's not, yeah, it's not crazy lightweight, but I do think you're, you're correct in that the tips and tails are very light. Yeah. Now, I think when it comes down to choosing between these two skis, the way that I think about it is the percentage of your time that you're skiing park. So the more park, the more 94. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's how I, I personally would choose between them, um, with some exceptions. Yeah. Like if you live in an area that gets a ton of snow, and you're not like worried about edge to edge quickness for like multiple switch ups or stuff like that. Like you're not competing would be a good way okay, to think yeah. about it. Like then I think it doesn't really matter. And as in a, an area that gets a lot of snow, 101. But if I personally was choosing between them or if I owned both, this would be like my daily driver. I'm gonna go do anything on it, ski. That would be a park ski yep. for me. Yeah, I like to think about it as like, what else do you have? Yeah. Is it, a, I have zero skis. Right. And I'm looking for something that's going to be an everyday option for yep. everything I do. And I think that that points people to the 94. Yeah. If you have something narrower or you're looking for... A, something like almost a pseudo powder ski. Right. Here. Then 101 might be a better choice, but... It's also hard for me because I had such an overwhelmingly positive experience <laughs> on the 101 to like, sh you know, potentially shake it up and get something that's a little bit more appropriate for sure. our daily lives on skis. No, they're, I mean, they're incredibly fun to ski. Yeah. They're just like, yeah, it's, it's like hard to describe. Yeah. Kind of. Like there's, <laughs> there's like... There's just something about them where yeah. as soon as you're clicked into them and like look down at what's on your feet, you're just like, oh, this is going to be easy and so much fun. Yep. And it immediately is easy and so much fun. No, Line does a great job as a company as a whole in their They're ski design fun. process. They really do it. You know, and it's even the weird stuff. It's the Sakana. It's no, the blade. No, exactly. They get it's like, this stuff. It's right. the bacon. Right. It's blade optic. You know, right. they just, every Line ski I've been on, I've been like, this is fun and interesting and different. Yeah. You know, there's right. just something a little bit different about it's it. It's almost like the company is like two steps ahead of the consumer. Yeah. Because it's basically like you're always convincing somebody like, no, seriously, this yeah. is really no, fun. No, this super weird shape with a swallow tail. And right. <laughs> it's, right. You ski in a 174 and it carves like crazy. And then, Right. Yeah. Yeah. This feels like it should take less convincing. Yeah. But it does feel like it, it does feel like that theme still yeah. of, of with line skis where like yeah, they're just they like it feels like they set out with a really specific goal. Yeah. Like we are going to create a ski that's very, very good at this application and they go out and they create that yeah. ski. And you know, I think you could say that within lines collection this ski is designed, or both of these skis are designed a little bit more as like, no, these are supposed to be versatile. Right. Like that's part of that goal. Yeah. Rather than like Sakana, which is like, we're going to give you like lateral G-forces that you've never felt before. Right. And like Blade, where like, you know, similar thing or what's that huge one, the Outlaw. Right. 
It's like, this is your giant powder ski. Like this feels like at least they went after a little versatility there along yeah. with a unique, unique application. That's great. Yeah, that's what it should be all about. Yeah. No, they're sweet. Yep. This is the best graphic, right? I'm not a huge fan of either, but I suppose I would choose the 101. It's like skeleton hand theme in both yeah. of them. Do you want know. flaming skeleton hand or lightning skeleton hand? I would guess I would take, I suppose I would lean 94 because it operates multi, it's a little bit more ambidextrous mm. than that, which I could not put the right ski on the left foot or it would drive me crazy. Uh, you got to have the, the, the hand. fingers have to line up. This one looks a little bit more either way. I, just, I really like the lightning. Yeah. I think they nailed it. I think if, honestly, like, I feel like it's weird when we, like, critique graphics. <laughs> but I wonder if anybody ever thought about just the lightning. Because that's my favorite part. Yeah. The blue and the white and how it contrasts kind of the black background. I, I don't know. I think it's cool. I just can't deal with the asymmetric, asymmetric graphics. No, and I, I know they're not your favorite graphics. You said that earlier. Yeah. I'm kind of putting you on the spot here. No, I don't mind the graphics, coloring and stuff like that. I just wish it was one way or the other. If it was just lightning, yeah, you can do whatever you want. Sure. With it. Anyways, you could, you could do this for hours. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's it. That's new line Chronic ninety four and one hundred one. Um, like I said, I'd love to like put a flat binding on them or, or mount it without a demo binding and, and just bash it through the park. Yep. So. I'm going to try and do that. All right. We'll see if we can get our hands on a pair at the start of next season, or, or maybe I'll see if I can get a, my hands on a pair to take to Whistler and yep. put it through the paces out there. It'd be great. So let us know if you have any questions about either one of these skis or that bacon, new bacon too. It definitely falls into the same conversation. So yeah, let us know if you have any questions, and we will talk to you soon. Bye.